So I'm trying to explain DHCP and DNS because uh, recently um, people are getting questions from here also. So that's why. Um, to explain so. okay so what is dhcp dynamic host configuration protocol dynamic host configuration protocol port number is 67 68 what is the use of this <coughs> dhcp okay so dhcp server so this is my server you know, generally our router act like a DHCP server. I already explained uh, uh, the part. OK, so here I have a clients. OK, so already I explained how to uh, configure manual IP and uh, uh, other things. OK, so uh, dynamic IP, right? So these are the DHCP clients. DHCP client means I choose network adapter first option. OK. So this DHCP. Server will assign IP address to the clients. It will configure DHCP. Uh, I, uh, so through the DHCP server. Assigns. <coughs> this is again. So DHCP server assign IP address to the clients. Yeah, it is uh, difficult to copy. So then I take it as directly. And put it as a picture. In this place. See here it is guys. Here is uh, my DHCP server. My DHCP server, I create a scope. So this is the range. Scope means this is the range. So in my DHCP, I am telling. So give the IP address to the client from 192.168.1.10 to 110. So totally 100 IP addresses. OK, so these are the four clients. Four PCs are there. This CPC is configured manually. CPC is configured manually. So what I have to done, so DHCP can give IP address to A, B, and D. It cannot give IP address to C. Why? Because of C is already configured with the IP address manually. So it won't give you. Okay. So this DHCP server, okay, we can be a Windows server or a Linux server or a it can be a router. It contains a range. So in that range only it will give IP address to the clients. The actually how it is give the IP address to the clients. <coughs> Initially. OK, DSCP client do not have any IP address DHCP client don't have any IP address. What it will do? It will broadcast. A DHCP discovery packet. It broadcast discovery packet to everyone in the network. Are you DHCP server? Are you DHCP server? Are you DHCP server like that? It broadcast DHCP server. So DHCP discovery packet and DHCP server when it is received the packet it broadcast. Yes, I am the DHCP server. So I have an IP address. Do you want it? Like that it will broadcast. So when it is communicating, it communicates with a MAC address. Not exactly communication. It use the MAC address when it is forwarding the message, right? So obviously the client and server will understand the system identification by MAC address <clears throat> because client don't have an IP address. 
and uh, client will identify by client's MAC address only. Client will identify by client MAC address, not by IP address here. So when DSCP server broadcast the offer packet using a destination address as a DHCP client address, DHCP MAC address, so DHCP client's MAC address. So whenever the client uh, DHCP client received a offer packet <coughs> and DHCP server, uh, sorry, DHCP client will broadcast server to the servers, okay, DHCP. request so finally dhcp server assign an ip address to the client by dhcp packet this process we call it as a dhcp dora process discover offer request acknowledgement again i'm telling guys very simple dhcp client don't have an ip address you should try to discover dhcp server dhcp server will send a offer packet to the client so do you want an ip address like that so the, i have this ip address do you want it and dhcp client give the request packet yes i want a ip address and finally dhcp server send an acknowledgement packet by configuring dhcp client okay so this is the work of dhcp discover offer request acknowledgement Okay, so this is the, <coughs> um, yeah, um, actually, I can draw all these things, okay, but it is very neat draw, no need to redraw it. <coughs> all, all are uh, created by me only, except this PPT, except this part, I have taken from uh, Microsoft only, okay, remaining all are I draw, uh, I, 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 I made myself, okay. So this is a very simple explanation. DHCP client do not have any IP address. So it will forward the, it will send a packet called a discover. And server send a packet to the client is called a DHCP offer. So once it is received offer and it is request to the server, uh, um, uh, DHCP request packet, yes, I want a IP address. And finally, DHCP client will configure with an IP address called acknowledgement. So this is a DHCP process called a DORA process. DORA means discover, offer, request, acknowledgement. Request, acknowledgement, okay? But I didn't explain, so this part, right? So what is this part? Uh, uh, we'll go, first of all. Yes, this is a dynamic host configuration protocol. What is DHCP? Dynamic host configuration protocol which server assign IP address to the client automatically. So client get an IP address from DHCP server. You have a mobile phone. Can you, how do you, how to assign IP address to the mobile phone? We don't know. You have a laptop. You have a uh, desktop. So a lot of people don't know how to assign IP address manually, right? They, uh, we, we don't, they don't know what is the net, uh, current network uh, address there. So what will happen? In generally, okay. So what will happen in generally? So it is very difficult to assign. Next, you have a number of computers are there. You have a multiple number of computers are there. Four, four, five, ten, twenty. No problem, we can assign IP address manually. Think about you have a 50 computers, 100 computers, 200 computers. It's very difficult to assign IP address manually. Okay, so manual IP address or a static IP address, a admin will configure IP address or a user is configuring IP address. For a certain devices, it's very difficult to configure like a mobile phones, printers, smart TVs, LEDs, uh, uh, LED lights, smart LEDs. Nowadays we are all having that one. So these smart devices, it's also difficult to assign IP address. So what we use, we use 
DHCP server to assign an IP address to these devices. Large number of devices is very difficult to assign IP address. And there is a lot of possibility of entering wrong IP address. Wrong IP address. I want to assign IP address 192.168.1.11. Instead of 1.11, I, I put a 2.11. Wrong, right? Uh, instead of 192, I put a 172. Wrong IP address. There is a possibility of assigning wrong IP addresses. It gives little bit problems, right? Wrong IP address. Next, uh, and uh, conflicts will occur. It meaning is if I assign same IP address to two machines, it is 1.11, and this is also 1.11. It is possible that conflict will occur. If conflict is there, so both PCs cannot communicate it to any PC in the network. Both PCs cannot communicate. Any, 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 no PC will communicate with anyone. It's a conflict. Conflict means names can be same. For example, uh, already told uh, in a, in my our classes, some people are having a same names. Okay, Saurabh, 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 Saurabh. Some mixer, some mixer, some mixer. Like that's the same name. Neha, Neha, Neha. Same names can be there. Okay. But if I give uh, some unique ID, so okay, what happened? I given a unique ID for each one, like a roll number. So there is no conflict with the uh, names, right? So same name. Now problem is if the roll number is also same, then what happened? Definitely there is a conflict. So the so same IP address for a multiple devices, two or more devices is called a conflict. The possible conflicts, possible wrong IP addresses assigning in the manual. So one is like a difficult number of devices increases. It's very difficult to assign. Nowadays we are having a different type of devices that is also very difficult to assign IP address. Not everyone knows how to assign an IP address. Everyone is not a technical person, right? Not everyone. Okay, and also they should understand what is the network and what are the IP addresses all already used. Okay, and there is a lot of possibility of assigning wrong IP addresses. Even in my class earlier, so that it is directly physical classes uh, um, and the practical classes also. That is a CTS batches are there. So then I use uh, physical classes. We, uh, we start, uh, we, we are earlier, we, we are conducting. So that time what happened, uh, people are as, uh, should assign IP address to the uh, Windows 10 PC and Windows Server PC. So there are uh, both PCs are not communicating. So when we uh, when I go and check it, they are given a wrong IP address. OK, so that's uh, uh, again they have to check it and change the IP address accordingly. Those two PCs no problem. Multiple times it has happened. It's very big problem. Right next uh, dynamic IP. So what is this dynamic IP or a uh, automatic IP? So DHCP server assign an IP address to the client. So DHCP server assign IP address time and uh, it is depends upon the range of IP addresses and number of devices. OK, so we can change IP, a network also change. Uh, OK, so whenever you, you have a laptop, for example, I have a laptop. I'm in Hyderabad now, so then I connected to network here. So I got some IP address automatically from this particular router in, in a here uh, router. So now I went to my place, Vishakhapatnam. I have a, uh, there is a router, router act like a DSCP server. I'll get different IP. Or a IP according to that network from the DSCP server. OK, so if network changes, if you, you, you change the network in a static, again, you have to change the IP address manually. But here it is. It automatically change the IP address if you are in an automatic mode. There is a less or no possibility of entering wrong IP addresses. No conflicts, even a clown conflict is occur. It resolve automatically. OK. So everyone is not required to know how to assign IP address in our home. In my, for example, in my home, my father, my sister, my my mother don't know how to assign IP address. My sister has a lot of knowledge, little bit knowledge. Knowledge is there, but it's not her work, but she has a knowledge on computer. But my father.
father don't know how to ask an IP address, my mother don't know how to, how to ask an IP address, my nephew don't know how to ask an IP address. We didn't teach them, but still there are connecting, right? How it is possible? Automatic. And mostly they are using mobile phones and obviously we need a DHCP server. Okay, so DHCP server will give an IP address to the clients. So what, what are the client it is? If it is request for an IP address, it will give. So this is the very short form of DHCP. So DHCP is a dynamic host configuration protocol port number 6768. DHCP server assign IP address to the clients automatically. Okay, advantages of using DHCP server. So whenever you change the network, you will get an IP address from that network DHCP server. OK, uh, large number of devices, we can easily assign an IP address. There is a less possibility or no possibility of wrong IP address entering. OK, less conflicts or no conflicts. Conflicts will be resolved automatically. Conflicts will resolve automatically. Everyone is not required to know how to assign IP address because of a uh, lot of non technical and um, that. Okay. Uh, even a technical person also um, not required to uh, understand an IP address part because it is DHCP server is giving IP address. And also we can assign IP address to the different devices, not only a PC or laptop. Also, we can give an assign IP address to printers, mobiles, smart TVs, smart LEDs, echo dots, all these things are there. So DHCP works based on a uh, a DORA process. OK, so whenever the client request for a, a, a IP address, DHCP server will give the IP address. So that process we call it as a DORA process. DORA means discover, offer, request, acknowledgement. DHCP client uh, discovers where is the DHCP server by sending DHCP discover packet. Whenever DHCP server receive the packet, it give DHCP offer means IP offer to the DHCP client. The client request for an IP address to the DHCP server, then DHCP server give the IP address or a configure the IP address to the client. This is this is called a DORA process. Discover, offer, request, acknowledgement. Okay. Very fast, right? In these many days, I'd never take the class in this much fast. OK, guys, understand or uh, completely gone? So here in this picture, also you can see. So how to make it as a automatic? You can look at this picture also. You want to assign an IP address. You want to change it. IP address uh, like a manual or automatic part. So then you can try this one also. It is not expanding. Of Alan. Can you see it is? Of course, you know how to go to network connections. Open the adapter. Properties. IPv4 properties change it to obtain IP address automatically. It means you become a DHCP client. OK, automatically you are become a DHCP client. Change it to the second one. It is a manual. It is a manual. Like this. This is the manual part. This much is not required because you are already know this is the manual one. I'm copying the entire slide, otherwise I have to write it again. This is the manual. This is automatic. This is a manual one. 
uh, of course, uh, here is a troubleshooting things uh, which we have to uh, discuss uh, one. So we'll see if it is small part. I will going to take it from here. So then I will add it. So DHCP related or a network related troubleshooting. This is the one of the thing. Guys, uh, when you check an IP address, you are getting an IP address. You are getting IP address means you you have seen an IP address this like this 169.254. Meaning is you are unable to get IP uh, you are unable to get an IP address like this. You are getting an IP from DHCP server. In case there is a problem with your DHCP server or a network related issues, you are not getting a an IP address. You are not getting a IP address. So what will happen? What will happen if you are not getting an IP address? System will assign itself an IP address. System itself assigns an an IP address. System assign itself and an IP address. So in that case, in the, in, in that cases, okay, uh, IP address is look like this one, 169.254. Meaning is you got an IP address. So if you got like this, first of all, check IP address, make sure DHCP runs and uh, other network connectivity. One more, one more problem I will tell. This is the second one. So this is a when you got change the network. For example, I am in in the Vishakhapatnam. I came to Hyderabad. Different network. Not only physical network, so also logically like a, a different routers, different networks. So network is changed. For example, I am in a home. I went to office. Home network and in office different network. So automatically my IP address should be changes. But IP address is not changing. Make sure it is not manual IP. Make sure it is not manual IP. It should be in a dynamic IP only. You check it. Enable disable the adapter. Still not working. OK, so two solution. One is enable and disable the adapter. Okay, and you see these adapters. You have to right click and enable and disable will be there. Disable the adapter, enable the adapter again. OK. In that case also not changing means. You are make sure that your DHCPs are running and you got this IP address or IP address is not changing even though you change the network. There's a two solutions. One is go to ncpa.cpl, go check the adapter, disable it and enable it. See the problem is solved or not. Next or, or you can do go to command prompt. Type IP config space slash release IP config slash renew. So release means it remove your old IP address. Renew means it update your IP address from DHCP. It try to get update from DHCP server. So this is the one kind of troubleshooting guys. One is when you check the IP address, it is showing like this. Or your previous IP address is not changing even the you change the network, but IP address is not changing. In these two conditions, you can troubleshoot like this. One is go to adapters, right click, disable the adapter, and enable the adapter and check the IP address. Are you getting IP address, fresh IP address from DHCP server or not? Or, or you can go to command prompt, type IP config space slash release. Just remove the old IP. It will remove the old automatic IP address and put a IP config space slash renew for a getting a new IP address. OK, guys, so this is about your DHCP just once. What is DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol which assign IP address to the clients automatically? OK, that's a very simple to know, right? So we are getting an IP address without entering. IP address into our PCs, right? We are getting an IP address automatically from where DHCP. Guys, understand a little bit, at least one or two points.
No. I'm muted or not muted? I'm good. Okay. So let me finish this first uh, of a DNS. Okay. So this is also a uh, important point. Okay. So uh, after Active Directory, Active Directory is also very important, but this is also important, right? So this is DNS, Di domain name system. DNS, domain name system. Port number 53. It maps name to IP address. So how DNS works? There is a very big explanation is also there, but I will try to explain uh, uh, directly, strictly like how. Guys, you open a something in your web browser. For example, I am open w3schools.com. But as I say, all communications by IP address only. All communications by IP address. You cannot communicate with the names. So what will happen? Your request. Your request will go to DNS server. So you're asking, I want an IP address of W3schools.com. You are sending a request. I want an IP address of W3schools.com to the DNS server. And simple type DNS server returns. DNS server returns the IP address of W3schools.com. Then you can communicate to the W3schools.com with a IP address. Same way in 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 the in the in a in a in a one example way I will tell now. So guys, you have a mobile phones, right? You have a mobile. OK, in a mobile, you have to communicate to someone like you want to make a call. You want to make a call. So how to call to a someone by dialing phone number. And uh, can you able to remember? All the phone numbers. In my contact list, I have a thousands of uh, mail contacts can be there, not thousands, hundreds only. Because previous batches and we are just some people will send a messages, right? So we have a little contacts of a previous batches. Now I don't know how many people are there. OK, so very less usually I don't save the students numbers, not all the students one or two. OK, for batch one or two. Now recently batches are not saving anyone. OK, recent batches I'm not saving anyone. Uh, mainly HCL people are floating batches. So here it is. I have a mobile. For example, I want to make call to my father. OK, so then I can remember uh, my father phone number. I remember my phone number. I can remember my sister um, uh, number, my uh, mother's phone number. I can remember. Nowadays people are having two two mobile lens numbers, right? So then second numbers I didn't remember. Even my I have a two number second number. I don't remember. OK, not much memory. And I have a friends, families and uh, students. Uh, in organization, some people are there. I don't remember any one phone number, right? So it's very difficult to remember all the phone numbers. Then what we will do it? We'll create a contact list. In the contact list, what we'll put it? Name and uh, their phone number, right? So when you are uh, trying to call to someone, for example, I want to try to call to someone. So then I open the contact list, choose the name, Press the dial button. Call goes to phone number only. Mobile communications or landline communication, whatever it is, telephone communications by telephone number, mobile number only, not by other things. So all communications by numbers only, not with the names. But in our contact list, we have a name and phone number. Same way DNS server is also there. DNS server having a names. And. <coughs> IP addresses. So I want a W3schools.com IP address. Then it will return IP address of W3schools.com. Google.com IP address. Facebook.com IP address. OK, how we know how to reach the DNS server? 
in our network configuration in our network configuration we have a ip address subnet mask default gateway and dns server address okay so because of dns server address we can able to communicate okay so here i have written same thing only open a browser www.google.com so then uh, we need a ip address of google.com or pc send a request to dns server and ask ip address of google.com so dns server returns ip address of google.com now we can reach to the google.com server with the ip address okay so that is about your dns very simple dns server domain name system port number 53 maps name to ip address so you want to communicate to a system with a name or with a domain name or a fqdn <coughs> okay so you don't know the ip address of the system so then you ask dns server to get the ip address it's an example best example for uh, explanation is mobile phone contact list Yeah, you see here it is a, a one example you can see. So I, I type a, a google.com. Okay, ping google.com. So what happened ping google.com returns. First of all, it find an IP address of google.com. It find a IP address of google.com. Then it is communicating from Google. So it reply from IP address. It is not showing reply from www.google.com. It is showing google.com IP address. Okay, guys, understand. So then with the IP address only will communicate. And there is another question. Uh, MAC address question is also there. What is this MAC address question is? Okay, so what is this IP address and MAC address question is uh, can we communicate with the MAC address? No guys, we are directly not communicating. While you are communicating, we are using a MAC address, not IP address. Sorry, while you are, while you are communicating, we use IP address, all communications by IP address only. MAC address is used in the local communication in, in the in a, in a in a networking we use ip address is uh, ip address use ip address to communicate not with the mac address but mac address is there in the communication for a mainly identification different places identification is important okay this is the architecture of total dns server so before uh, uh, yeah that is a big one Yeah, these are all PPDs, uh, whether we have to put it or not. So we have a very less time because it's, uh, DNS is a very good chapter. Actually, up to this, it's a enough of a DNS. But original DNS naming conversions are a little uh, uh, part is there. So anyway, it is now it is 120. We can't start in another topic. So we'll finish this topic today guys compulsory go to the previous batch kind of stuff which is i already started but uh, this part i want to speak about it but i didn't go to um, if possible there is tomorrow class is also there okay so if any changes i will tell tomorrow morning but tomorrow class is there saturday class is there so i will uh, put a new topic any new topic or a revision topic just if you revise yourself I don't need to take uh, revisions again. OK, so here it is. Different naming things are there. NetBIOS means I have a computer. My computer name is there now. So that is a NetBIOS name. My computer name is NetBIOS name. OK, and uh, what is this NetBIOS will do? 
it uh, maps your computer name to IP address. And that to IPv4 address only. LLMNR, this is a new one. Okay. It is same as a NetBIOS, but in a, in a LLMNR, it use IPv6. IPv6. Okay. So WINS is a server. WINS is a server like a DNS. Like DNS server, WINS is also a server. M meaning is Windows Internet Naming Server, but WINS only use in the Windows, but not in a other OSS. And next, DNS is a open protocol. So any kind of operating system, any device can use DNS server. Okay, both are name servers, naming services only. But DNS is open protocol. Any Linux, Unix, uh, Windows, anyone use DNS. Wins cannot. And Wins only support IPv4, NetBIOSes and IPv4. It does not support FQDNs and IPv6 kind of stuff. What is this FQDN? Fully qualified domain name. Look at here, guys. This is the a device which is under this domain. The entire name is like this server one dot sales dot south dot pantaso dot com. So you can see here it is. This is the google dot com. This is a dot DOCS. DOCS dot DOCS. This is a different server. This also belongs to Google, but it is YouTube.com. Uh, so what are the all our <laughs> nonsense and I have entire nonsense is on my screen only now. It's okay. No problem. Okay. Um, this is W3Schools.com, but that's a different point. But can you see it is a www.google.com. Google.com is stable, but here is a www. It is DOCS. If I go to mail, mail.google.com or gmail.com, so different uh, domain names either directly it is see mail.google.com. Okay, this is Gmail only, but mail.google.com. Okay. So that's the point. It's a fully qualified domain name. Google.com example. Google.com is a domain name. The host name means server name is DOCS. Then total name is DOCS.google.com. www.google.com. Mail.google.com. So these are all FQDNs, fully qualified domain names. These fully qualified domain names meant for an IP address, right? So in this diagram, you can see here it is. This server having a IP address. So this FUDN is pointed to an IP address. Okay. So this is the naming terminology. Guys, if you don't get this point, no problem, not much day, but understand what is a DNS. So because of uh, uh, I have uh, that information, so then I want to tell, so I am doing this one. Okay. This is a um, small part, then I will tell why I am giving this one later just for a this also from Microsoft. Originally you have a local PC, your local PC uh, uh, cannot connect it to the uh, the DNS, right? So you have a local DNS server in case in our in, in our places we have a local DNS server that is our router only. Our router act like a local DNS server router act like a local DNS server, but local DNS server not having more information. What it will do it to forward the query to the forwarder. The forwarder is maintained by ISP provider. So it will try to communicate to the different parts of our DNS things. OK, finally it will get a IP address of it. For example, here it is mail one dot contaso dot com. So I want to communicate mail one dot contaso dot com. I forward that information to DNS server. DNS server forward that information to the forwarder. Forwarder find out what is an IP address of mail1.contaso.com and returns to the return that IP address to local DNS, local DNS to our client. Okay. So what is this process? I will explain it. 
and again i am telling guys uh, you are, if you are not <coughs> able to understand it's okay not it's not a big deal this is the last part uh, i am not going to uh, these uh, remaining parts like uh, what are the records and all just how our dns server works i am trying to explain it okay but important is the basic sentences are very important what is dns what is the use of dns okay that is very important so in this one i will take um, this it does not contain more tools that's the problem okay guys here it is this is my local pc this is my local pc so is it control c new I designed that one. I designed that picture. I designed this one. Uh, it is not uh, directly copying as a picture. No, not, not, not. It is not coming anything. Okay, no problem, guys. Uh, we'll try. You have a PC. You have a laptop, right? So then, in my laptop browser, I put a divorce start Microsoft.com. Okay. I don't know the IP address of divorce start Microsoft.com. So then, I forward uh, to the my local DNS server. In my case, it is a. In my case, it is a my router. Okay. So I I forward this query. I want the IP address of docs.microsoft.com then this local dns server don't know the ip address of docs.microsoft.com and it forward that query to isp isp forwarders are there forwarder this is the 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 dns server the what they are maintaining called a forwarder this forwarder contains a root hints root hints means there is a total 13 dns root dns servers are there root dns server totally 13 which is maintained by iana i can like you wanna you register a new domain name whenever you register a new domain name domain name registration is there no godaddy.com so whenever you want to register a Domain name from gov.ie.com, okay, uh, big rocks, domain.google.com, so different uh, different uh, things are there, right? So when you are registering, just for uh, this is a uh, used to register and uh, also maintaining websites also there, okay? So here it is, if I want to register uh, from google.com, but google.com is uh, not a warner, big rocks is not a warner, okay? And uh, GoDaddy is not a owner. Uh, who is the actually maintain? Ayana, I can only. Okay, I'm trying to find uh, any domain kind of stuff for my cars. So I put a Latif Technos. Actually, I want to put a my Google uh, my YouTube channel is also Latif Technos, uh, but I didn't do it. Uh, I didn't. Uh, that name is not coming like that. A uh, name is uh, with my name only. It is coming. Yes, it is in a bracket only. It is not exactly not showing. Uh, like see, it is studio dot youtube dot com. So this is www dot youtube dot com. So FQDN only fully qualified uh, domain names. Yeah, very good. See it is which type of domain you want to buy it is uh, there is a pricing dot co dot in dot com dot online dot org dot net like this okay but the information of dot com server dot com is a one server dot net is a one server dot in is a one server dot org is a one server dot info is a one server dot space is one server dot site is one server dot tech is a one server okay so these are all servers okay so Each one having a uh, some kind of um, see price is also there relevance price 
so these three are a cheaper 750 790 rupees per year some are giving differently but it may have a, it is a more secure dot page is a more secure why it is more secure ssl certificate uh, you will get it directly this is also more secure okay <laughs> It's a domain name registration from Google. So other places also there, even it is the less prices, it is available. But again, for SSL, you have to pay extra, but this is no need to pay extra for SSL. That's a very simple understanding. And uh, what we are saying, this is the part. The part is, what is this root DNS server? Root DNS server, 13 root DNS servers are there. So there are maintained by ICANN. So all your top level domains, .com, .org, .net, .in, uh, anything, .app, .online, and .uh, um, .desi, .global, uh, .xyz, uh, .tv, okay, uh, .uh, uh, something like that. People, I have shown that this, we see in this kind of .info. Okay, dot me, dot website, dot international, dot education. These are all uh, information stores, their IP address, those servers, IP address, top level domain IP addresses, or domain information store in this root DNS servers. They put a name of these root DNS servers like this. A, one server, B, one server, C, one server, D, one server like this 13 dns servers are there okay it's a dot finally it is there is a dot okay now the forwarder get the ip address of dot com so i have a this divorces dot microsoft dot com so then i found the dot com ip address then forwarder reaches dot com server forwarder reaches dot com server so you look at here it is it is a dot com server okay reaches the dot com server and asking like i want a microsoft.com ip address i want a microsoft.com ip address now forward no microsoft.com ip address and it is asking i want an ip address of divorces.microsoft.com to the microsoft.com dns server because microsoft.com having a different host in the in a, in a different different purpose like office.microsoft.com technet.microsoft.com learn.microsoft.com dvcs.microsoft.com mva.microsoft.com channel9.microsoft.com like different microsoft.com are there okay so finally the forwarder found an ip address of dvcs.microsoft.com then it will forward that information to your local DNS server. From your local DNS server to your computer. Now, finally, you have an IP address. Then using that IP address, you can reach your divorces.microsoft.com. Of course, through router only, just for a logical uh, purpose only, I've written like this. Guys, this is how DNS works. Okay. In generally, when you are telling about a DNS server, so you, DNS server is a domain name system which maps IP address to sorry, name to IP addresses. Which names? You have QDNs, fully qualified domain names. Okay, domain names are a fully qualified domain, not a domain names. Look at here, Google dot YouTube dot com is a domain name, but WW is a host. Studio is a host. It's totally FQDN. So. DNS mainly give IP address of of a host in the domain. Okay, IP address of a host in the domain. Okay, so in simply say you want to communicate to a PC or a host in a domain. Like a, you are opening a lot of websites every day, but we don't know the IP address of this websites right we don't know the ip address of websites so who will give the ip address of website dns server so our 
immediate DNS server is local DNS server, basically our router. In our home, basically our router. Okay, that's it. Now, uh, the entire communication is, okay, that if you understand this one, okay, no problem. If you don't understand this one, it is okay. But important guys, again, I am repeating, DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, port number 6768. DHCP server assign IP address to the clients automatically. Whenever the client is connected to the network, DHCP server will give IP address to the client. DHCP server use DORA process to assign IP address. Discover offer request acknowledgement. Client discover server. Server give the IP offer to client. Client request for an IP address to the server. Server send an acknowledgement. Okay. Next. Uh, DNS domain name system domain name system the port number is 53 it maps FQDNs or I simply say better to say name to IP address like our mobile phone contact list you want to make a call we open a contact list and choose the name but actually call goes with the mobile number only phone number only Similarly, when you open a website in your browser, so the uh, we don't know the IP address of the domain, IP address of the website. The request go to DNS server. DNS server returns an IP address of the website, and so then we can reach the website by that IP address. That information is enough. Last time I told about peer-to-peer -peer and a server and client. Server and client, server provide a service, client access the service. Client request for a service to the server, server respond to the client according to the request. Okay. Peer-to-peer -peer is a is like a work group model only. Okay. So different type of servers uh, are there uh, with a different protocols response is there. Web server, file server, DSCP server, DNS server, domain controllers, uh, deployment servers, mail servers, VPN servers. Guys, VPN is also very one important question. Please check it. Okay. What are the different type of server operating system? Different server hardware also we discuss. Work group and domain. This is also one very important thing. So what is a work group? Decentralized administration. Domain is a centralized administration. In a work group, each and every PC is controlled by their administrator. One administrator will be there. It is a centralized administrator. Centralized administrator. So it is very difficult to control large number of computers, uh, their settings, their uh, local policies, okay, um, and, uh, users user logins cannot be controlled in the work group but in a domain so from domain from domain we can enforce different type of settings to the large number of users and computers using group policies okay so in a domain controller it we store all user and password information so when of the client is logging to the uh, uh, domain uh, computer so then we will verify their authentication and will give authorization so here it is also i, I try to explain active directory domain active directory domain is a logical administrative boundary of users and computers active directory is a da database store uh, identity of users computers groups services and resources information Active Directory authenticates users when they log into the domain computers. Okay. This is the uh, main part of uh, Active Directory. It is a Microsoft service. Okay. It is a Microsoft service and use authentication protocol called Kerberos and LDAP protocols. It stores the data in the databases. The database name is ntds.bit.
that's it three these things are a very important guys so please check it otherwise uh, if you want i will share this also so someone asked me a question that day uh, is about uh, uh, <laughs> uh, storage part so then i moved to the storage okay that's why i moved to the storage part okay so uh, but it i completed the storage also better to go once the storage so compulsory uh, try guys yes aniket got 48 what is the pass mark for a uh, uh, percent 50 Okay. Okay. So no violence. So no one is anyway speaking. Uh, only two. Our Kush and Mansi only available now. <laughs> it's okay, guys. No violence. It's uh, some stop recording. <laughs>